Hello and welcome back to the Grandia 2 playthrough. So, starting off from last time, we are still in the Tower of Garnia. Still running into spiders and cutting them out, you know. <laughs> Nobody wants to see spiders get killed over and over again. I know I wouldn't. So, basically, this is basically mainly a tutorial sort of dungeon. Basically giving you the field of exploration through a dungeon with, like, your enemies. At the moment we're just encountering spiders, but as we progress up the floors we'll actually be encountering a new enemy. Excitement! But basically, yeah, another spider, kill it quickly. And then grab this bag, which is a hand grenade. Admittedly, I do the foolish thing and I don't actually use this at all. It might have been handy during this part, but... To be fair, I don't really, I don't use attack items that much because I just don't see the point in them overly so. I prefer, if I'm using an item, I'll use a healing item or a stat boosting item, anything along the sort of lines of that. Attacking items, I will usually sell as soon as I possibly can because it would be better, better effort putting that sort of the money you gain from that towards getting new weapons and armor and that all that sort of lovely stuff. So at the moment I'm just kind of running around like a bit of a headless chicken because obviously you've got to always you've got to look in every nook and cranny to find every item. I mean I can't remember exactly where everything is. I mean, as a long way, there's nothing major in this place, obviously, it's just mainly potions, gold, and obviously the odd hand grenade that you came across, obviously. And this floor is actually quite a nice easy floor because there's no enemies or anything, it's just a nice straight walkway across a dangerous narrow bridge. And we pick up some gold, which is always nice, it can buy you lovely stuff. Like, I don't know, gold plated armour. Right, so in, on the third floor things start getting more interesting because we actually start, we start encountering new enemies. Well, I mean, for up till now anyway, I mean, you know, well, we've seen the spiders and birds, but now we've got gargoyles. So the first thing to notice about this, like, you know, gargoyles is the fact that they're a lot more harder, you know, they're, they're on the, the, you know, on the toughness scale, I'd say they're, uh, well, I mean, for the beginning of the game they're tough. You come across much tougher later on. But this match I decided to, I mean this was actually quite a good one because I had a bit of fun. Basically, I just keep cancelling its attack. And so this match is just me using criticals over and over. And this guy not getting a word in edgeways. Which I found really fun. You know, it's quite nice, it's refreshing to not be hit or, you know, having to defend, it's just constant easy kill. Of course these gargoyles, I mean, I say they're tough. Look how easy I took that down, but I mean, it didn't get a chance to do much and it was only selecting attack. Up, a up ahead though, I'll actually will feature a gargoyle and it will show off a bit more of its abilities and you'll see why it's a bit more of a credible threat than just, you know, oh yeah, Phantom always talking out his ass here. <laughs> But at the moment, general exploration, Gargoyle, cut him out because he did nothing interesting. From this point onwards, after we clear this tower and basically get out of the village, we'll actually be on the road and we will actually be making true progress then because at the moment I like to call this, this is like a sort of tutorial area sort of thing really. You know, they're just giving you the grasp and basically what to expect upcoming because, you know, obviously being an RPG there'll be dungeon exploration, there'll be treasure grabbing, they'll be murdering countless hordes of monsters. You know, you'll leave a trail of destruction for every dungeon. And at this point I really couldn't actually be bothered to fight any more spiders, so I decided just to avoid him. So we're going for a quick heal and at this point if they give you a save point before going into an area like, a, like the bottom of the stairs or something, you want to save, because generally 9 times out of 10 that means that you're going to be facing something boss-like. 
And so you take this opportunity to say, because if you die, there's no continues or anything like in recent games where you continue and you start from that point before. You need to save, otherwise you'll just go back to the last place you saved, which nobody wants, because it's a right pain in the rear. Now, this one is the more tough one in the terms of you're facing two gargoyles, not one. Which again, already is a dramatically increased bit of difficulty there. And I would have, if I was actually going to be playing this like, and not trying to show off anything, I would have gone straight for the other gargoyle because he's actually planning something more dangerous. But I thought, no, we want to show off some magic because at the moment I won't be able to access this for a while so I thought why not show you some magic. So this is how, which in the old game looked like a tornado but in this version it looks like really threatening donuts falling from the sky and that's why the gargoyle is quite a credible threat because if these pair gang up on you and start using howl attacks you're gonna lose HP fast depending on the competency of how you're playing. But basically, if I was playing this without showing off anything, I'd have gone straight for him to stop him from using Howl. And the main part in this fight is when you're fighting a boss or anything like that, concentrate on one part first. Don't just go and attack whatever you feel like because you're going to die quickly. You want to take out like one thing at a time. As you progress, there'll be monsters with multiple parts of them, like giant, scary crab things with pincers, which is really scary. But basically, it'll have different parts, and you'll want to take out the different parts as you go along. Otherwise, bleh, you'll die. And it's a lot easier just to take them out one by one. And here we go. Plus. Shit the bed. She's bleeding. To be fair, between this and the old game, the fact of, as far as I can remember it from the like first Grandia, in all the character portraits there was never any blood. So this is kind of like a first for this series, really, to actually show some character damage and blood and death. So yeah, we're not in lollipop land anymore, kids. The shit just got real. So if that's what's what, that's what's happened to Tessa, who actually had a character portrait, I worry about what's happened to the rest of them without portraits because they're obviously minor. No one cares about them; they can die. Cannon fodder. And Ryudo, if you were more butch, you'd have been able to open that door. What a wimp! You see, I reckon the bird could do it, but he's just not going to try. So at the moment we're in a right pickle, because obviously what they wanted to do has completely fallen on its ass, and we're going to have a complete disrespect for property and just break a window. Lovely. Oh, here we go. Holy what though, Ryuda? Holy what? Oh God. God, them in cryptic symbolism. Now, don't worry, because that will actually come up later in the storyline about Ryudu and his past and everything, because sometimes I've known things to go, oh my god, I've seen this before, and it goes nowhere. There is actually some explanation and everything, so don't worry about that. But for the time being... We are just worrying about the fact that Elena has got wings and she's evil. And Ryudo has just broken the tower. God damn it, Ryudo. No shit, Sky. 
Right, so now we're going to have an Indiana Jones escape sequence. Which, luckily I don't have to control, otherwise this would have gone horribly wrong. See? Action hero. But to be fair, so yeah. It's bad when the game hits the fan this early and, you know, people die. Shit gets real. So, to be fair, this kind of sets the tone for things to come because obviously... It's got to get a lot worse for this because this is just the beginning. We've got way, way more stuff to do. People who are going to come and go, stuff we've got to kill. <sighs> Jesus. When we get to it, God, the boss battles. We'll, we'll talk about my disgruntled attitude towards the bosses later, but to be fair, let's just let Elena recover now. And also having her night terrors. To be fair, so they voice act key moments where you meet new characters or key scenes, but I mean, to be fair, it's like it's pretty quiet at the moment. I mean, I don't know, this is quite a key scene. It's the fact that, you know, she sprouted wings for God's sake. So, I don't know. Crazy people. What am I looking at? Look at me. Somebody used Halnado. <laughs> and if you don't get the reference, we'll worry about that later. So, to be fair, obviously, whatever they did, it was a complete flop. Not obviously, it's purple. Well,. Tess has got a bloody character portrait and she's dead. Sorry. There's nothing I could have done. There was gargles and everything. To be fair, I don't know why there was gargles because... I don't know... Well, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, dumbass. There were statues. The statues became gargles. Duh. Uh, okay, to be honest, for the first half or so of the game. I mean, she, well, not even that much. First, like, third quarter of the game. She's quite annoying with this indignant attitude of her. I mean, just, you know. She goes from bloody depressed Elena, you know, they're really dead, to the, you know, I'm going back, blah, blah, chucking her weight around. She's kind of one of the more annoying characters. At least with Yudo, he's abrasive, but at the same time he's hilarious just because he comes out with this stuff Elaine on the other hand just comes as a, com to a total control freak <laughs> Oh, that was a bit painful I mean to be fair there is a time and a place for abrasive comments though not all have perished we're still here Blue Jars is still alive I'm gonna bet Oh, here comes the indignant face. Oh, God. Uh, see? He's terrible. He's so sarcastic. He just... He does sometimes come off wrong, but when he actually... When he does something quite funny, and it isn't in bad taste, then it is alright. But sometimes he just... Takes it a bit too far, I reckon. So, all in all, that is pretty much that. It, uh, that is it for this part, really. Next part, we will be finishing up in Carbo, and we will actually be on an adventure, quitting Bill with Baggins. We will be off out of this barren town with no crops, and we will go over to I don't know, whatever the adventure area is over to the next town where they have their troubles blah 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 yes that is a great idea let's take her back to Bluehead Giles so now that is it for this pass and to be honest I reckon 
that's it for the tutorial stuff because we are going to get into more fun stuff obviously there'll be the tutorial stuff about mana eggs and magic as we get those and as they come along but it's nothing too huge so for the most part the easy stuff's gone now thank god but that has been another Grandia 2 playthrough and I will see you again next time